Welcome, math friends. We're going to talk about trigonometric functions today, specifically graphing, talking about asymptotes, talking about domain and range, transformations, and common values that you'll see. First, we're going to focus on sine, cosine, and tangent for this video. And let's refresh our memories as to what sine, cosine, and tangent are defined as using the unit circle and in general. Okay, instead of x, I use theta because we're actually talking about the angle theta. So here for a unit circle, the sine of the angle theta is the y value, cosine is the x value, and tangent is y over x. In general, if it's not just a circle of radius one, sine is y over the radius value, cosine is x over the radius value, and tangent is y over x as well. Doesn't matter if it's a unit circle, the tangent doesn't change. Let's look at some common values for these three functions. In the first quadrant, we've got our 30, 60, 90 triangle and our 45 degree triangle values that have helped us in the unit circle. When you're talking about on the axes at zero, sine is zero and cosine is one. At 90 degrees, pi over two, sine is one, cosine is zero. At pi, cosine is negative one and sine is zero. And at three pi over two, sine is negative one and cosine is zero. When you're at 30 degrees or pi over six, sine is a half and cosine is root three over two. And then when you move up to the pi over three, that changes. For pi over four, they're both root two over two, which makes the tangent nice and clean. Notice that sine for all values of X takes on some Y value. There's not any issues. But for tangent, because you're talking about Y over X and sometimes X can be zero, we have undefined. And what that means is we have a vertical asymptote at those values. That means that your function is approaching, but never takes on the value. It gets closer and closer, but it doesn't actually get there. So we do have asymptotes for the function tangent and we represent those with dashed lines. This is just the parent function. It's not been transformed yet. It's only when you're at pi over two, three pi over two, five pi over two, and so on. So for every pi over two, three pi over two, five pi over two, you're going to have an asymptote. So it's an interval of pi starting at pi over two, and then every pi thereafter or before is going to have an asymptote. For the functions y equals sine of x, y equals cosine of x, and y equals tangent of x, sine and cosine are gonna take on all of the values of x but tangent is not. And so I can say the real numbers for sine and cosine, but not for tangent. For tangent, it's all x values except when x is equal to pi over two, three pi over two, five pi over two. Your range, notice that your graph on a unit circle went up to one, but that was it. So your range is not gonna take on all real numbers for sine and cosine. The y values are only gonna go from negative one to one and they will include those values. So you would have negative one is less than or equal to y is less than or equal to one. We haven't really explored tangent very much. You've only seen a few of the values. You've seen pi over six, pi over three and pi over four. But tangent, as you get closer to the pi over two value or negative pi over two is actually going towards infinity and negative infinity. And so it's going to actually take on from negative infinity to infinity. It's not actually gonna be negative infinity. Tangent is going to be able to have a range from negative infinity to positive infinity. General graphs of these functions, I'm gonna plot the values that we have to show you what they look like. I'm going to fill in common values of sine and I'm going to use the fact that root two over two is about 0 0.707. In the first quadrant up to pi over two, all the values are positive. In the second quadrant, all the y values are also positive. In the third quadrant from pi to three pi over two, they're negative. And from three pi over two to two pi, they're also negative. And notice I've got this curve now that I can actually model. If I was to go clockwise backwards, I would go into the fourth and third quadrant, which is negative. So I'm going to come down again and then go back up into the positive to the left-hand side. And now I can connect this. 
This is the graph of a sine curve. It goes on forever, as you've seen in the domain, and it reaches one and down to negative one unless I've transformed it. This graph is an odd function, which means it's symmetric about the origin. You'll notice that the first and fourth quadrants, if you rotated those 180 degrees, would match up with the second and third quadrants. An odd function means that when you plug in a negative x into the function, you get out the negative function, specifically f of negative x equals negative f of x. So whenever you're substituting in a negative x, you'll get out the negative y value. Let's look at cosine now. Cosine is pretty similar to sine, but remember, some of the, they take on the same values, but just in different places. Connecting this graph. The cosine is the sine graph just shifted by pi over two. If you took this function right here and you shifted it to the right, pi over two, I would be going through zero and I would have that same graph as the sine function. You can see here, if I took the blue graph and I moved it to the right, pi over two, they would lay on top of each other. The cosine function is an even function. It is symmetric about the y-axis, which means that the right-hand side and the left-hand side, if you folded the paper, would match. An even function is when, if you plug in a negative into the function, you get back the same function. Let's now look at tangent. Looking at the graph right now, they look like they'd be just straight lines, but there's going to be some curve to it. Here is the graph of the tangent function. It's like, kind of like a little bit of a curvy girl. And this graph is also an odd function. Only cosine and its reciprocal secant are even, and then the other four trigonometric functions are odd. Let's finally talk about transformations of trigonometric functions. There's four components. Remember, we've done a transformation video where we're talking about inside versus outside, stretching, reflecting. The same thing is true, but we have special names for these stretches and compresses of what we call them in terms of these trigonometric functions. Because if you notice, trigonometric functions repeat. If you look, this tangent repeats every pi interval. Sine and cosine repeat every two pi. We call that a period. And then their height we call amplitude. If you recall our transformations from the previous video that I've done, we have inside and outside. Outside the function, we have a reflection that is vertical and a stretch or compressed vertical. Inside the function, we have a reflection across horizontal and horizontal stretch or compress, and then we have shifting vertically and horizontally. Inside is the horizontal stuff, outside is the vertical stuff. But when you look at it in terms of a trigonometric function, we call that outside reflection and stretch the amplitude. We actually have this letter that will relate to the period, and then we have the horizontal and the vertical shift. So there's a little bit more to the intricacies of the transformations for these trigonometric functions. Notice the way it's written. It's not just bx. We have 2 pi over b that helps us with the period. Whatever number you have inside the function helps us determine the period. And we're using absolute value because we're not taking the sign. That sign is going to be a reflection. Your amplitude is going to be how much your graph is stretched vertically. Your period is how much it's stretched horizontally. Recall, if your A is negative, that's going to reflect it vertically. If your B is negative, you're going to reflect it horizontally. Let's take a look at a visual of this to show you what that looks like in the graph and how the amplitude actually looks. Your amplitude is from like the midpoint of when you're resetting before you go above the axis or below the axis. So your amplitude is only half the height. But when you're looking at your sine and cosine, notice it went from negative one all the way up to positive one. Your amplitude would not be two, it would just be one because it's from zero to one or zero to negative one. 
And then your period is how much it takes to reset going from, it has to go down and then up and then back. And then when you start to go down again, that distance is your period. And then your horizontal and vertical shift is where your parent function starts. So remember, sine starts at the origin and cosine starts at zero one. So when you're shifting, you're going from that point. I hope this was helpful. Thank you so much for watching.